Nobody knows what the uh, uh, I'm not too worried about being alive because Surveying the area that we're in, 
why we are so excited to get our preview day officially underway. Uh, for those of you that are joining with us online, we're thankful for you. We're so sorry that you couldn't come, but please come to our campus and schedule a campus tour, and we would love to get you guys here in person as soon as we can. Uh, with that, I'll go ahead and pray for us, and we're going to have a great worship together, and then we will hear a great word from our president, Dr. Barry Creamer. So will you join with me in prayer? Dear Heavenly Father, Lord God, we are so thankful for this day. We're thankful for any day that you give us, Lord God, but specifically, we are grateful for this day. Lord, we're thankful for the men and women that you have called here to this day to be shown in Criswell College. Lord, let us be a light. Let us show the Christ-likeness within this institution. Lord, thank you for such a great community that we have here, Lord God, that we are a foundation in Scripture, and we are sent to serve wherever you have called us. Lord, Bless our time of worship. Bless the message, the word that Dr. Creamer will bring to us. And Lord, it is in your name we pray. Amen. If you guys would please stand.
All right. Glad to be able to spend this time with you. You can you can have a seat. Uh, I uh, just want to spend a few minutes with you talking about uh, on preview day uh, some of the things that I think the Lord might want you to consider as you think about where you're going to be studying and whether you need to study here, whether you need to sign up and, and become a student here. I want you to. So in all of these things that I'm going to be saying, I'll be uh, sort of putting you at arm's length in some ways. But I'm not, I'm not, I don't really think that. I mean, what I think is you ought to sign up, you ought to study here, you ought to be signed up by the end of the day, and if you don't, you're a crazy person. Uh, so that's all, that's, you, should, you just need to know that about me from the start. So I want you to be here. On the other hand, uh, we are a particular kind of school, and we do things for a particular reason. And if the Lord doesn't want you to be here, then neither do we. We think the Lord wants you to be here. So to be clear, I, I, that's, I, I don't think he's keeping you away from us. But I do want you to understand why we want you to be here. And it's not a, not a selfish thing for us. We have a mission we think God has called us to. We have given our lives to accomplishing what he has called us to do. And we believe he has given you a mission and a purpose that he's called you to. And we think it's our responsibility to help you get there. I mean, that's what we are all about is helping you figure out how to get where the Lord wants you to be. So for me to have this conversation with you more meaningfully, I'd like to figure out who some of you are. So first of all, if you are a preview day student, I know some of you are watching online, you can't raise your hand. And if you do, I won't see it. I apologize for that. But for those of you who are in the room here, if you are a preview day student, would you put your hand up for a second just so I can give a kind of feel for where you guys are in the room? Okay, I got you. All right, very nice. I appreciate that. So just give me a sense of who who you are. So what do you do right now and what do you want to do? That's the object here. So it's a very simple question. So like you might say, uh, right now I'm a student in high school or right now I work for the city of Dallas or right now I blah 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 whatever it is. And then you might say, and what I want to do is serve in church ministry in some way or what I want to do is be an elementary school teacher or what I want to do is be a counselor or what I want to do is I don't know figure out what I need to do maybe that's what you'll say okay everybody understand rules of the game very simple you may not begin your own sermon this is my sermon don't take it over <laughs> so the object here is simple I am so and so I do this I want to do that everybody got that okay who's willing to participate you don't have to I just want volunteers yes sir uh, my name is Jason Castleberry. I work in medical billing, and my hope is to be a pastor. That's how you do it right there. Okay, very simple. Nicely done. Thank you very much. Great work. Glad to hear that. Did you raise your hand? Yes, go ahead. My name is Ezekiel Rodriguez, and, I want, and, I'm in, and I'm a high school student. I'm a junior, and I want to find out what I want to do and how I can serve God at the same time. Perfect. Nice. Thank you very much. Love, love, love that approach, too. And this is the reality. We all know we need to give our lives to God. We don't all know exactly what we're going to do with it. And even those who think we do may not until we actually get there. And then we may realize that what he's doing with us, even though we knew the name for it, isn't exactly what we thought it was going to be. So uh, this is a great approach, too. Anybody else want to share? I'd love to have a couple more. Anybody else? Yes. Hello, I'm Emily Mitchell. I am a senior in high school, and I would like to continue serving the Lord through worship ministries and potentially education. So. Very nice. Okay, so worship ministry, church, and uh, elementary education or something along those lines, maybe an education. But you already do some worship leadership, apparently. Yes. All right, very glad to hear that. Anybody else? One more? One more? Anybody else? One more volunteer. Come on, I, I want one more. I can get one more. <laughs> oh, sorry. Now they're like, oh, if it'll get the sermon over with, let's just keep going. Yeah, go ahead. Well, I want to uh, 
joined the PPE program. Yes, nice. Glad to hear that. Yeah. <laughs> James, James Mangle is one of our PPE graduates coming up this year, and so he's excited to see you coming into it. And you're up at North Dallas Family Church, right? Isn't that right? So great. Uh, glad to see you all here. I, I didn't, didn't get to shake hands with you on the way by, but I'm pleased for you all to be here. So look, the reason I'm asking those questions is because we do have a sense of where we are, you know, who we are right now. We have a sense of where we think the Lord wants us to get it. Paul, in the book of Ephesians, deals with this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look at the end of Ephesians chapter 3 in just a second with you. And we're just going to spend, you know, 20 minutes or so looking at a particular part of that passage. But in order to get to it, I, I want you to see how Paul prays for the people of Ephesus to whom he's writing. Because he's writing to people he's already described as being in heavenly places in Christ. You know, they're already situated with Christ. They, they're already redeemed. They're already part of the family of God. In fact, part of the mystery, in fact, the mystery of the New Testament is that God includes those who don't deserve to be included in his family. He includes the Gentiles among uh, the Jews. And so all the outsiders are coming into the family of God. All of that's resolved. By the time he finishes all of that, he's speaking to people who are already believers. They're already included in the family of God. And then he says, and I want to pray this prayer for you. And he gives this prayer at the end of Ephesians 3 that I'm going to read to you in just a second. And one particular verse is what I'm going to dwell on. I just want to kind of work our way there. So when he, when, when he brings up this prayer, if you know the book of Ephesians, you kind of know how it fits in the structure of the book. The first half of the book, he's telling them who they are, where they are. They're in Christ. They're already redeemed. The earnest of the, their salvation is already down and so on. When you get to the end of the book, starting in chapter 4, it's all the part about being worthy. So walking worthy of the vocation wherewith we're called. That's what he starts us with in Ephesians chapter 4. So the last half of the book is how do I live this out? What's it supposed to look like? And what happens right at this juncture in the middle is that he offers a prayer for them so that they will understand why he has higher expectations for them than what he's already described them having, which is being situated with Christ in heavenly places. I mean, what else is there to ask for? Well, there is to ask for that you would live it out, which is the last half of the book. But, but what does that does that mean? We're not we're not we're not completing Christ yet. I mean, what you know, what kind of a status do we have? And so, in his prayer, he sort of explains what that is. And for you, this will be relevant because of what you are looking at as you move forward in your life in Christ. And so, just the opening part of the prayer creates this window uh, where we can understand that even when we are fully safe in Christ and committed to him, there is still room for us to grow. And this is a, this is a thing I'll spend time uh, as you hopefully sign up today and get through the admissions process. And then when you're completely in and you have new student orientation coming into the program, then we'll spend the time talking about this first half. And that's, uh, that'll be more important for the day you're actually starting into classes and thinking about graduating. But for today, we just need to introduce this concept because I do find uh, that for you to have an honest assessment of who we are as a school and of what the Lord would do with you while you're here, if he sends you to study here, uh, that you should have a heads up about this. It's just sort of honest telling of who we are and what would happen with you while you're here. And so it's involved in this prayer. So he says, for this cause I bow, I'm in, I'm in verse 14. And by the way, I'm, re I'm reading from a King James. I've had this Bible since I was in high school. And I know that was a long time ago. You can tell, I know. But the point is that I've had it since then, and I used it back then. This was my uh, soul winning Bible because it fit my coat pocket. And that's right. When I was in high school, I walked around in a suit coat all of the time. So this is part of my rebellion as an adult that I don't wear suit coats as often as I used to. Anyway, in verse 14 in my King James, it says it this way, but we'll talk about what it says in Greek in a second. For this cause I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. We're under the Lordship of Christ together. I'm bowing my knees to the Father. He's the Father of our Lord, so he knows they're already Christians. He says, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might. So you've not already arrived at the full strength of your salvation, even though you're securely placed in Christ. There is still more room for you to grow. The way Paul says the same thing in the book of, as he's writing to the Corinthians, it's in 2 Corinthians where he actually says this. 
is that we should learn to perfect holiness. That you have holiness, you've been set apart by God, but you've not perfected it. You've not seen the full maturity of it yet. And so he's saying here, I'm praying for that. I'm praying for you to grow in your faith. Not a complicated statement. So that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his power in the inner man so that Christ might dwell in your hearts by faith so that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height and to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge so that you'd be filled with all the fullness of God. Now, I'm saying all of that because, man, I've been, you know, I was saved when I was nine years old. I, I knew I was lost. I knew I was going to hell. I was scared to death as a little kid lying in my bed that I might die overnight and wake up in hell. And so I called out to Jesus to save me. And as a friend of mine, Tim Lee, said, he was he's an evangelist from uh, ages ago, uh, as he always said, I mean, people, people criticize me for that. Like, you know, uh, Jesus is not just a fire escape and just to avoid hell is, is not the best reason to get saved. And, you know, I, I respond just like Tim Lee. I say, it, it's not the best reason to get saved, but it's not a bad one. Uh, you know, I, I, and so I, I, I literally was afraid of judgment as a nine-year-old. And I called out to Christ to save me, and he saved me. I mean, that night I knew he saved me when I was laying in bed. And I was ignorant. I was, I was nine years old. Every nine-year-old's in it. There are no nine-year-olds in here. Nobody brought their kid, did you? Okay. So no nine-year-olds in the room. All nine-year-olds are idiots. I mean, what would you expect? I, I'm praying it for the wrong reason. But I was desperate for salvation, and Christ saved me, and I have no doubt. Looking back on it. I know that I was scared to death, and I know that Christ heard my prayer. I knew that he had risen from the dead. I knew he was my only hope for salvation, and he saved me. And from the time I was nine until the time I was 16, I was a very weak Christian. I got baptized right after I got saved. I had a great church. I had a great pastor. I had people who loved me. I had a family who went to church all the time. But I just did not commit myself to following Christ the way I could have. When I was 13 years old, I didn't care about what was going on at church at all. I was a 13-year-old, 8th grade, you know, just selfish kid. And I, when I was 13 years old, knew for sure that God was calling me to preach. And I did not care. I was not going to be a preacher. I was going to be a lawyer. With my, we already had a debate partner. We were winning tournaments. And we were going to go to college together, do our debate. I mean, do our law practice together. Everything was all set up for me. And when I was 16 years old, God really turned my entire life. Uh, as an act of rebellion against my parents, I went with a friend to his church instead of to my parents' church. That's my act of rebellion when I was 16. I was a bad kid. I didn't say I was a drug addict. So when I was, and, I, and, and if you are, then I'm glad the Lord redeemed you from that. But what he redeemed me from was just stupidity and rebellion. And so this uh, friend of mine was sitting next to me in class and said, hey, I'd like for you to come visit my church with me. And I went to his church, and I told my parents, hey, I'm going to go with my friend to church instead of to y'all's church. And so my friend was in a fundamentalist church, a very legalistic fundamentalist church. They're not all that way, but this one was. And that my act of rebellion was it, it's sort of like joining the Marines because you don't want to be under authority anymore. Uh, so I go to this very legalistic church, but the Lord really busted me up about it. I heard people preaching and saying and living things that just put my Christianity to shame. They weren't living it out in the ways that I understand now, knowing Scripture better, uh, to be exactly right or any of that kind of stuff. But they were, they were dead set in their commitment to follow Christ wherever he wanted to lead them. And that really humiliated me. I was embarrassed. And I confessed it to the Lord, and he started convicting me again that I needed to preach, and I finally committed myself to ministry. And that's a seven-year journey from being nine years old to finally saying, oh, uh, yeah, Lord, you saved me. Where do you want me to go? What do you want me to do? But I finally did say, where, where do you want me to go? What do you want me to do? And what he wanted me to do was become a preacher. And so I committed myself to that path. And these, these statements that I'm reading to you right here, so that you would know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, so that you'd be filled with all the fullness of God, this is sort of what I'm saying to you. There's, there's a point in your life where you, if you're, say, if you're sitting here today and thinking about coming to school at Crystal College, you presumably have said in your heart, I'm willing to go where the Lord wants me to go. I, I want to do what the Lord wants me to do. And you may think, you may, you may be seriously committed to going where the Lord wants you to go, but not really know what that's going to look like. And one of the things I'll give you, not this is not the point for today. I haven't gotten to the message for today yet. The point, I'm just getting, we're getting there in the next verse. But the point I do want you to have as we walk into it is, 
you you may have things where you're saying, look, I already know what I believe. I already know the Bible like the back of my hand. You give me a verse, I can quote it. You, 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 you ask me a theological question, I can answer it. I know it all. You may say that. But what you'll discover while you're at, at school here is that that's not true. That the things you know, you, you, don't really, you don't really know as well as you think you do. And that if you'll humble yourself to learn, God will fill you up with knowledge that you don't have, with convictions that you haven't experienced yet. And your life will change. It will happen. And that shouldn't surprise you. It shouldn't shock you. The idea that, that you would come to a school, that you would come to a place where God has prepared people solely for the purpose of helping you get where he wants you to be, and that you might actually learn something different than you already think, shouldn't surprise you if you understand the theology that says that when we come to Christ, we just begin the journey of learning and growing in him and sanctification being set apart for him, that we will follow all through our lives until we finally see him face to face and realize the maturity of what it's called us to. None of us obtain the perfection that he has for us until we're with him, until we experience the resurrection. Okay, so all of that said, that's just background. Here's the verse. Now unto him, he says, with confidence now, I'm praying this to a God who can bring this to pass. Now unto him, who is able to do exceeding, this is the King James translation, who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us. Unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. That's the close to his prayer. So what he said, he said, I'm praying desperately for God to give you growth and for you to understand the fullness of his love and his purpose for your life better than you ever have. And I'm praying to a God who I know can do it. In fact, I'm praying to one who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. So, so let's just pause here and think about this. I'm going to get a few volunteers here, if you don't mind. So I'm going to get you all done. So you, like, you would be willing to do this, right? You're willing to help me out. You don't know what I'm going to ask you to do. So the look on his face says, I don't know. It depends on what you're going to ask. All I'm going to ask you to do is just stand here. Not even up here, just on the floor right there. Is that, would that be okay? All right, what's your name again? Ezekiel. All right, Ezekiel, you, if you don't mind standing right here, thank you very much. So this is where you are today, all right? So and this, is, this is not a statement on Ezekiel being lesser or greater than anyone else, but I am going to say this is where you are today. It's not where you, it's not where you plan to end up. It's just where you are today. So you're a high school student right now, yes. and yet you know the Lord wants to do more with you than just get you through high school and then you're done, you know, right? So like the rest of your life is just a retirement party. You're just going to say, no, you know, the Lord's called you to more than that. So he's in high school right now. This is where all of us are. We have a state that we're in right this moment. And then there's something, like Ezekiel knows this, there's something that we want to ask for. So I need another one. You know, would you mind? All right, you're going to be over volunteer. I'll get you next, though. So I got plenty. I got plenty of spaces. I'm going to need you too. But hang on just a second. So right here, this is when Ezekiel shows up. Forget that it's Ezekiel now. It's just you. When you show up, you're saying, well, right now, I do this. But what I want is something more than that. I know the Lord wants something more for me. If that weren't the case, honestly, you wouldn't be sitting in the room right now. So there's a thing you're asking for. So for you, and you guys can turn around and face them. I don't want you to feel awkward. <laughs> if you feel more comfortable, you can close your eyes. But that would make us feel weird. So that's okay. <laughs> uh, so the point here is that there's a thing that you're willing to ask for. So you're saying, you are saying right now, this is who I am, but I think the Lord wants me to have a degree. I think, I think the Lord wants me to be prepared. I think he wants me to take some classes. I think he wants me to get a better understanding of what's going on. So it's something you're willing to ask for. This is what you're asking for. But beyond that, go ahead. Yeah. And your name? Matthew. Matthew, okay. And your name again? Jason. Jason, all right, very good, thank you. So Matthew here is going to represent the things that you don't ask for. You don't say out loud. So thank you very much. Yes, you're doing the right thing by facing outward. See, it's really weird when we just stare at each other in the eye. I don't like that. So, all right. So Matthew is going to represent not who you are today, not what you know you could obtain if you just came, took the classes, graduate, get the degree. This is what you are asking for. I think the Lord wants me to do this. I'm going to ask for the Lord to give me a degree. But there may be something subtly in the back of your mind that you don't express out loud, but you think, and you know, maybe the Lord would, and I was just talking to, can I, 
mention what you're thinking about doing, James? So I was just talking to James Mangle on the way down the hall, and he's graduating. Wait, wait your hand, James. He's graduating again in May. And the, well, depending on how he does. You know, it's a rough year. But <laughs> just kidding. No. Uh, all of us know he'll graduate in May. He, he's a great student. We love having him. But he's uh, practicing for the LSAT right now. So the, the law, you know, the, the law uh, exam that you take before you go uh, into law school. And so as he practices for that, I, you know, I don't know that he had planned on taking, in fact, I'm pretty sure he had not planned entirely on taking the LSAT or going into law school or, or pursuing that particular avenue for the goals that he had in mind. But in the back of his mind, he knew it was a possibility. It was something that you could think about. You have that same kind of thing. Yeah, I'm going to go get a degree. And, you know, maybe, and then you don't say these parts out loud. I'm going to go get a degree. I'm going to be a pastor. And, you know, maybe the Lord used me to lead a denomination. Maybe he'll do something with me to really transform the way the gospel is spread throughout the world. Maybe he's going to do something with my career that allows me to have an influence on the whole state or to be the governor. You know, we all think James Mabel will be the governor one day. Uh, or maybe, you know, whatever it is, but in the back of your mind, you know, there's something even more the Lord can do with you. And you, you can picture that, but you don't presume it. You don't necessarily ask for it, but you just kind of think, yeah maybe, yeah, yeah, maybe. I'll just go down this path. We'll see what the Lord does with it. That's thinking, okay? Beyond that, so here I need three more volunteers. So if, I, if I can just get three of you together, all right? Are you all three together? Y'all want to come? Okay, you'll be perfect if, you, if you'll do this. So you're just doing the same thing. Just, just stand down here and face out and feel awkward. Kind of shuffle your feet a little bit. Everything will be perfect. All right, thank you very much. I appreciate y'all doing this. But there's also more beyond that. And the reason I bring the more beyond that is for what this verse says. So this verse is actually really well translated. In the King James, in other translations, it's well translated. And what it says is this. Now unto him who is able to do, and think about the terms that we're using here, exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. Right? So I've got what I'm asking, what I'm thinking, and then I've got exceeding abundantly above. And what he says in the prayer is, I'm praying for you so that whatever, whatever it is that you're asking, what I'm praying for for you in, in, in the growth that God has planned for you, in the things he wants to do with you, what I'm praying for you, I'm praying to a God who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. So you're starting out today here where Ezekiel is. That's where you're starting. But what God is able to do with you is more than that. He's able to do, God is able to accomplish what you have asked. So you may think to yourself, I'm here, but I, I want to get my degree. God can do that. No doubt about it. So he says, well, I'm praying for you to a God who is able to do what you've asked. But he doesn't just say, I'm praying to you for a God, to a God who is able to do what you've asked. He says he's able to do what you ask or think. So all that little subtle stuff in the back of your mind that says, and maybe the Lord will also do this with me. Maybe, the, maybe this avenue will also open. Maybe, maybe God can actually accomplish this with me. God can do that. So I'm... You're here, and I'm praying for you that as God moves you forward in life and provides for you, that he will take you not only to what you ask, but also to what you think. And lo and behold, I'm praying to a God who can do not only what you've asked, but also what you think. That's as far as you go. Your mind doesn't even see beyond the possibility that you have in the back of your mind that you're not willing to express because you know it's beyond what you should say out loud. I'd like to, maybe, so, maybe for some of you it's as simple as saying, this sounds simple from here. Maybe you're saying, yeah, yeah, I think maybe the Lord would give me a doctorate. But you don't say it out loud because you know that when you say it out loud, other people do what they did to me. When I was finishing my bachelor's degree, there were people, I, I knew that, that, that the Lord might want me to get a doctorate. And I said, well, I'm going to go get a doctorate. And I had, a, I had people tell me, well, <laughs> let's see if you get your master's first, you know, let's see what happens one step at a time. I probably shouldn't have said it out loud. It's pretty presumptuous to say it. So there are things that we tuck down inside. And we just say, I'm not going to say it out loud. And we know the Lord can accomplish these things. That's fine. So now I'm praying to a God who I know can accomplish in you. Not just the things you've asked, but the things you're not willing to say out loud, but you do think might be a possibility. He can do that. But that's not where Paul stops the prayer. He uses this word. It, it's a single word. In, in Ephesians 3, verse 20, 
which is translated here as exceeding abundantly above. Hyper, hooper, et parasu. The way wise sound in Greek is different than they sound in English. So it's, a, it's an oo sound. So hooper, hyper, ek, out of. Ek is sort of this prefix that means out of. Hyper, et parasu, hooper, et parasu. Parasu means overflowing. So in Greek, this word parasu, it means full to overflowing, right? So abundant fullness. So this, this cup is already overflowing, and then it's ek parasu, so it's exceeding overflowing, it's doing more than overflowing, and then hyper ek parasu, hyper ek parasu, just like, you know, not hypodermic, but hyper, so things that are above are hyper. So it is above, above being above the rim, right? So he's saying, I, I'm praying to a God who is, a, and this is, I'm pointing this out because Paul says this on purpose. He could have just said, a God who is able to do abundantly everything that you ask and think and made his point. But he makes it twice more emphatic than that. The farthest you've ever even thought about moving forward in your life in the will of God or in any way is to this point. And Paul says, I'm praying to a God for you who is able to do not just what you ask or think, not just above what you ask or think, not just exceeding above what you ask or think, but exceeding abundantly above everything that you ask or think. So you're standing here. You imagine in your wildest dream you could be here, but the God we're praying to for you today can take you here. You understand what I'm saying to you? Six steps removed from where you started out. The amazing thing about this passage, and I promise I'll stop in a minute. The amazing thing about this passage is not even that. It's not that you are there, and by the magic of the work that we can do, because of what God will do in your life, we'll get you all the way down here where you weren't going to be before. That's... You know, this pie in the sky thing that we hear and we think, oh, well, that, that's fairly amazing, isn't it? It is fairly amazing. Did you know what's most amazing about it? The last phrase in that verse. Because how does he do it? Is it? This is what he says. Unto him who's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to. So in the same way you have aspirations where you're asking for something, you're thinking things subtly and God can actually do exceeding abundantly above that. We also have our prayers for what God is doing with our school. We think that Christianity, and by Christianity, I mean the expression of it that we live out. So Christianity is a doctrine, the resurrection of Christ, that Jesus is Lord, that his salvation is freely provided because of the blood that he shed on the cross, the gospel that he transforms our lives into being his messengers here in this world, all of that part of Christianity that makes it what it is doctrinally. It's pure, it's perfect, and that's what we should be committed to. When I say Christianity, I don't mean that. I mean the Christianity we live out, the way we express it in our faith, in our obedience, in our churches, in our lives. We think our Christianity should be better. We look at the Christianity in the world around us, and we don't think it's what God wants it to be. We think it should be stronger. We think we should love our neighbors better. We think we should have a better testimony of the power of the gospel to transform lives. We think we should have a greater distinction in the way the world lives and the way people see Christians living in their obedience to Christ. We think there should be something in just reading scripture for a believer that should make us profoundly different from everyone who's around us. We, we just think that, that God wants to use us to influence Christianity in the world. We know we're called to that. That's our mission, to produce those who are committed to following Christ and therefore leading on his behalf for his, his kingdom in this world. You understand that? We're a tiny school. We know we're a tiny school. We love being a tiny school. We love being in Old East Dallas in this urban context. We are here on purpose. We had a board that looked at the possibility of moving away and buying a big campus and doing all these other things. And we said, but this is what the Lord called us to. When W.A. Criswell had the opportunity to leave First Baptist Church Dallas or move First Baptist Church Dallas out of downtown and go do the ministry somewhere else on a big sprawling campus in a different area with greater wealth and all that kind of stuff. He said, no, this is where people 
have needs and we will serve here. And we as a college have said exactly the same thing, following our namesake and saying that this is where God has called us. And we know that if students can learn to do ministry here, then they can serve anywhere God puts them. They can figure out how to contextualize the gospel in any context. And so we love building the dorm here and housing you here and establishing your understanding of Christian ministry in this neighborhood because we think it can have such a profound influence. We understand the size that we are and the size that the country is and the size that the world is. And we still think God has called us to bring a transformation to Christianity in the world. And if you say to yourself, well, that's absurd. You're, you're, you're just a small college. You're not going to change Christianity. Then I would say to you, well, yeah, that's, that, that's a reasonable conclusion for you to draw. And yet we pray it to a God who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, we think we're underestimating what God can do with us. And if you say, well, yeah, I mean, you can think that all you want, but how are you going to get there? Then I would say to you the same thing about our school that I am saying to you about you today. Because when you say, well, how are you going to get there as a school? Well, how are you going to get there as a person? How on earth are you going to arrive at this destination where God is doing with you things you can't even imagine right now. They're exceeding abundantly above all that you ask or think. You know how you're going to get there? According to the power, just read the last phrase in the verse. I know you don't have it in front of you. I'll read it for you. Don't worry, I'm going to give it to you. According to the power, this is what he says. Now unto him who's able to do exceeding abundantly above everything we ask or think according to the power that is already at work in you. Yeah, it's not, oh, I'm going to flail about and try to find the power to arrive where God has actually called me to be. This is Paul saying, I am praying for you to realize the power of the Holy Spirit that God already put inside of you. He's already at work in you. Bringing this to pass. Not just what you've asked or what you think, but what only God can accomplish already fully lives inside of you because His Holy Spirit already lives inside of you. And in the same way, I say to you, we just want you to realize what the Holy Spirit can bring out of you beyond anything you've ever imagined. And you say to us, well, how on earth are you going to arrive at what God's called you to do as a school? We say, with the things that he's already brought to us. The thing that already comes to Crystal College, which is, as it turns out, you he brought you to our campus today. And he can make you a person who transforms the world. And lo and behold, with that, we become exactly the college that he's called us to be. So as God calls you here, as he gives you freedom to commit yourself to this school, just know we will be committed to working with you so that the Holy Spirit realizes in you exactly what he's called you to do, exceeding abundantly above everything you have ever asked or thought. Father, I pray that you would turn our hearts to hear clearly your direction in our lives as servants here at the college, but in the lives of these who are considering where you have called them and what you want them to do. And we do pray specifically for them that you would do exceeding abundantly above everything they've ever asked or thought, according to the power of your Holy Spirit, which already lives in them. We know you can do that, and we pray for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you all very much. You can go back to your seats, and thank you all for letting me spend some time with you. Hey, hey, how we doing, everybody? Oh, my gosh. Let's try that again. Right, we're trying that again. I'll give you all time. Take a deep breath. Be ready. You know what's coming this time. I want energy, excitement. Let's go. Hey, everybody. How are we doing? Hey, that is the energy that I love to see. Hello, you guys. Good morning. I'm so glad you're doing well. We're so happy you're here. Uh, first off, I want to introduce myself. I am Jonathan Petty. I am a student here at Crucible in my second year. Uh, I'm from Mesquite, Texas, about 15 minutes east of here, but my new home is the dorms right across the street here at Crystal College, and I'm so happy to be there. Um, I am a student life associate here in the Student Services Office, 
Um, and I love it here, and that is exactly what we're here to tell you, and this is my friend. My name is Edward Michel, and I am also a student here at Criswell. I am a sophomore in the PPE program, and I also live in the dorm. Um, I need to say where I'm from. I'm from the greatest city in all of Texas, Big Money, Texas, or Beaumont. Any Beaumont, Southeast Texas people? That's what I thought. Um, but I'm proud of where I'm from. I uh, love repping it. Uh, it's just a great town. Um, but together, we are Eddie and Petty, and we are excited for today. Um, I believe Eddie has, or Petty has, guys, <laughs> <laughs> We work in the same office. It gets really confusing. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, but right. um, Petty has yeah. some, some um, housekeeping things yeah, first. So we want to remind you of a few things. Uh, we've got some awesome giveaways for you guys today. Um, we've got a MacBook giveaway, and that will be going on in the coffee shop with Dawson. Dawson will be running that. So please take advantage of that. Um, the scholarship giveaway. Yes, that's right. But the only way you can get that scholarship is if you come to Criswell, okay? And you can do that today by starting an application here at this fine establishment today. We want you to be here, guys. So uh, please take advantage of those, and we will announce the winners for those later on. Thank you, John. Uh, so up next, we have the tour. And so I, I'm actually trained. Kyle has proved me. I will be your tour guide for today. So uh, right here, we got a. We got, uh, it looks like a pulpit. Uh, where's Ron on that? I forgot to move it today. Um, but right here, this is where like, you put your notes, your Bible. Um, pretty sturdy from what I can tell. Uh, Eddie approved. Um, we got the carpet that it's on. Um, it, it looks kind of a little old, uh, maybe. Uh, it's even got tape on it, so I guess we should probably get a new one soon. Um, oh, the stage is here. Uh, pretty well built, nice and sturdy. I could. I could uh, I could dance on this. I could uh, I could sing. Well, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. They've been in Warner Hall for quite some time now. It, it, it's a beautiful, beautiful room. Beautiful room. I mean, just the chandeliers, the lights. It's amazing. But we want y'all to see the rest of Criswell College. Uh, How y'all feel about that? That's what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I mean. Well, wow. we are so excited to go to Criswell. And here's what we're gonna do. We unfortunately will not be here to tour guys, but we have amazing people from admissions to help you with that. We have Laura right over here. Raise your hand, Laura. Awesome. We have Dawson right back there. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to split the room right in half, right here. This side, you're going to go with Dawson, and this side, you're going to go with Laura. Uh, volunteers, please do stay, kind of feel out where there could be room to fill in, and go with those tours. Thank y'all so much, and have a good day. Y'all have fun.